Hey guys and gals and welcome to another video from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Don't forget to like the video and to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, programming, Photoshop and all sorts of other videos. The team tries to add at least one quality video a day. And lastly, don't forget to remember, create your way. So uh, before we get started, I want to let you know that I am using the version 2.73 uh, beta uh, build. So things might be slightly different from your version, but nothing major has changed is it just some add-ons and minor uh, gui tweaks the actual uh full beta isn't out yet it's just a daily build with the features that will be in the 2.73 beta but anyways let's get started so um on the blender artist forums i've seen a lot of people asking how do i how do i model a weld because that's a very organic structure that needs to look a certain way so i'm going to show you how to do that so let's say we had a bezier curve i'm going to go into edit mode and i'm going to delete the curly one then i'm just going to duplicate this along the x and move it over here and then I'm going to repeat that and then I'm just going to fill these in and I'm going to give them a bezier circle just to use as a fill object. Whoops, I need to do that in object mode. So I'm just going to add in a curve circle, scale it down. Then under this curve, we will go into our curve settings and for our bevel object, we will use bezier circle. You can see it's all messed up. We can move this circle to an empty layer, or um, garbage layer, layer 11. So we need to get this curve right. So we're gonna go to edit mode again, and we're gonna make sure these are rotated properly. There we go. Just needed a negative 180 degree rotation. So yeah, if you had two curves sitting together like that, it looks like, it, it looks like they're joined. There's a seam there, but it doesn't look welded together at all. So let's say you wanted to make it look like you welded. So I'm just going to convert this curve into a mesh by pressing. I'm going to convert this curve into a mesh by pressing Alt C, convert to mesh from curve, or you can just go object um, convert to. So now we have a mesh. If I go into wireframe, you can see that's made out of all those sections. Now, the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to sculpt it. So we'll go into sculpt mode. We have enough geometry as it is because what we're going to do is we're going to use our sculpt brush. You can use any of these F brush, sculpt, draw. They all they both do the exact same thing. And then go into Dyn Topo and enable Dyn Topo. That's dynamic topology. And then change your detail size to whatever suits you. I'm going to do about 7.5. So that's the size of the pixels that each edge will be. So if I go into white, whoa, not that. If I go into wireframe and I added some detail, you'll see how each edge is now 7.5 pixels wide and how it's dynamically updated the mesh. But in solid mode, you can't see anything. Uh, if you checked out my uh, tips and tricks sculpting edition, you would see why dynamic dynamic topology is so great. But I'm not going to get into de detail about that here. Um, that looks a little small. I'm going to go about 10 or maybe stick with the stock 12. And uh, we'll turn on smooth shading. So to make it look like you welded, all you need to do is just pick a decent... A decent size for your uh, radius. I'm gonna go about 60 pixels, and then you would just basically go along the joint here and just add essentially what would be your weld seam. And then if you move it left and right a little, you'll get rid of that seam in the middle and play with the detail sizes or add more detail to your original mesh and it'll come out looking a lot better. But yeah, basically that looks like it's welded then. And if you wanted to, um, do I have symmetrize on? I do. I don't want to mirror in the X. Okay. That'll make things faster. Anyways. Yeah. So that looks like a welded joint more or less. And yeah, it's, it's as easy as that. You just go like that. And then you can obviously go later and um, you can take your, uh, your smooth brush 
and you can smooth it down to whatever degree you want. It's a little slow with dynamic topology, but it is a great tool. So yeah, that essentially can make it look like it's welded very fast and easy, especially from a distance. No one's ever going to tell, and it has that organic kind of spattery weld look. And if you really wanted to get detailed, you could uh, you could get in real close with a smaller detail size, and you could add little... Uh, We'll use, sorry, not smooth, we'll use inflate, deflate. We could add little, like, uh, weld splatters here and there, you know? If you really wanted to get detailed. See, kind of looks like a weld. But, um, another way that you can do this, using the, uh, brush, the regular draw brush. Um, turn the strength up to one. Under, which one is it? Stroke? Yeah, stroke method. You have all these different ways of stroking. So, dots is a good one. You can go like that, and if you drag really fast, you can see what comes up with dots. So, if I'm actually going to turn the strength down, if you drag really fast, or at the right speed anyway, you can kind of get that look that it has um, welded, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Sorry, a proper bead, so it looks like, you know, certain parts are raised higher than others. So that's one quick way to get that effect, but it's not very precise. It's better to do it manually, but you can also, just your stock space, the spacing is 10% at stock. If you turn it down to 1, there is no spacing. As you'll see here, it gives you just a nice smooth line. Oh, my detail size is down to 4 pixels, so it's doing a lot of calculating. Do, do 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 anyways so that gets really smooth but if you turn the spacing up a lot like i don't know 140 and then drag it does the exact same thing without the randomness you can drag at any speed you want and it'll it'll essentially dot it at certain intervals so that's obviously way too high so i'll set it to like you know 30 percent then if you drag your brush you can see it makes uh a perfect little it, it looks like a weld bead in my opinion every every uh, certain point no matter how fast or slow you drag it's the exact same and then you can go and just keep adding at different angles move left and right a little bit so that like I said you get rid of that crease and you can try out different brushes to get different effects but as long as you start at the same place or roughly the same place then yeah, you essentially, you get that, that kind of weld bead look. Then yeah, you can just go and smooth it out after. Turn my strength down, my radius way down. Smooth out the middle there. So you gotta play with that a little bit. Uh, you, you won't have that seam problem if you if you do create extra geometry. Let me undo all this. Yeah, right there. So if I go back to my original mesh here in edit mode, um, if we take the end of this pipe, so grab that edge loop and just move it along so it's as far as we can. I guess it already is as far as we can go. But if you add in more geometry, you know, some more edge loops. Let's see if I can throw some in there. Shoot, maybe not. Well, yeah, dynamic topology, what it does is it, uh, it triangulates everything, so you have to do this beforehand. But if you add more geometry in there, then it will give you a much uh, better result when you go to sculpt. Am I able to do a subdivision surface? No, that doesn't add any more detail. Well, I guess it does. So we'll give it a ton more vertices to work with. We'll go to level, I don't know, three, maybe. So nothing's changed. We just have a lot more geometry to work with. Now if we go into sculpt mode, and like I said, it would have been better if we had done this to start with, and go to our brush, turn the radius up to what we want our weld bead to be, Strength up a fairly good deal. Our spacings, we can turn it down a bit. And then, yeah, just 
giver. Oh, I gotta enable dynamic topology. I'm gonna go about 10 pixels. And yeah, just give her. And there, you can see you have less of that seam problem because it has more geometry to work with. Especially once you uh, go for a second pass and move left and right slightly. So go right to the top. And we'll go in manually and we'll just add a quick little tap there to equal that out. We'll go to the other side. Try to get the best view possible. And what you view you're in is really gonna uh, help decide what your what your sculpting will look like. Turn my strength way down now. I can give it a little bit more. Try to get rid of that crease. Turn my spacing back down to like a few percent. You can also just go straight for a curve. Or sorry, a uh, line. And that'll give you perfectly straight welds, essentially. As you can, oh, let me turn the strength up so you can see that. If you need to make a perfectly straight kind of weld on something, you just use line strokes, and it does that. So that can be very useful. So if I go back to the start again, I can add a stroke in there. And then from there down to there, I can add a stroke from there to there, and from there down to there, I can add a stroke from there down to there, a point, see how easy and quick this is, go from there up to there. And yeah, that is a quick way to make things look like they're welded. It does increase your uh, your your vertice count and your polygon count. You can start with uh, like right now we have two million verts and three million triang or four million triangles, but that's because we subdivided it so much. I mean, if we turn down the subdivisions, that goes back down to uh, thirty thirty eight thousand uh, polygons. And there's basically no difference because we've got smooth shading on. If we go to uh, shade flat, you you can see the difference. But smooth shading, it's 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 perfect. And if you use a smaller detail size in your dynamic topology, then like I said, that uh that that also makes it look a lot better. Once you get down to about five pixels, then you really you can't even you can't even you can't even see the edges like this. So they'd be about half this size. You'd barely be able to tell it. If you go down even smaller, well. Obviously, there you have it. So yeah, that's how to make anything look welded very quickly without um, having to actually model things. And you can also do this on square objects. If I went and added a mesh cube and then duplicated it and scaled it down, or I'll scale it up and then move it across, just make it look like they're intersecting. I can do the same thing. I can first I'll subdivide. I'll join these actually. I'll or control J to join them to one mesh. I'll add a modifier, a subdivision surface. Oh, that's gonna make it look weird. I'll add a simple subdivision. And that should give us, yeah, extra geometry. So I can turn it up to level six. You know, obviously this is overkill, but I'm going for the best look possible. Go into sculpt mode, enable dynamic topology, about 10 pixels, turn off smooth shading. Well, yeah, we'd have to, add, oh, we can add an edge split after. And then, yeah, basically, we're on line, stroke, 
and we still have a decent amount of spacing to make it look like there's a bead and then just click on one corner and drag and see what kind of effect you get it'll take a second to calculate the first time and start from that corner go down a little big I could obviously take the radius down and it's affecting the rest of our cube possibly because of my subdivisions I'm not entirely sure I'm not a pro sculptor but yeah very basically that is really all there is to it now there's gonna be a billion faces anyways I don't know how long that'll take to calculate but there we go okay so yeah we could turn the subdivisions back down probably I'm not gonna make much or any difference you get the point and then just add an edge split in and then just shade smooth so you can see I use 10 pixels so it doesn't look very smooth but yeah if you give it some work you can get very realistic looking welds so that's really all there is to it so there you go that's how you easily create things that look like they are welded together very easily using dynamic topology and sculpt mode and specifically a uh, line uh, line mode and um, a small detail size and increasing the spacing between um, between strokes when you draw basically so it looks like there's a bead anyways thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. Again, that's BlenderTEK.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like and don't forget to subscribe for more Blender, Unity 3D, programming, Photoshop, and all sorts of other videos. We also now offer hard copies of our videos, so if you'd like a copy to download on your computer to watch in the media play of your choice later, just let us know and we'll upload it to our server. If you dislike this video for some reason, don't just leave. Instead, leave a comment or email the team at infoblendertech.com about what you did not like. Or if you did like something, let us know. We also take requests for tutorials, so let us know what you want or want more of. See you next time, and remember, create your way.